Okay. <clears throat> it is 12.10 a.m., April 14th, Wednesday, 2021. Let's start VR Citizen. Today's episode, we are going to film the 3.13 PTU setup tutorial. So, uh, this is going to be, like most of my tutorials, one long, gigantic video that's going to set up one thing after another after another. Uh, so what you're going to want to download to get all of this working and you could pause after I tell you all this and I'll list the links and stuff down below in my YouTube When this eventually goes up on there, but you're gonna want to get Vortex and that costs money I think 30 to 40 dollars these days <clears throat> Then you're going to want to download open track Which is looks like this here Real quick hang on. Okay. Yeah open track 2.3 or whatever the latest version is, and it should look like a little octopus guy. All right, so you're gonna wanna get and install that. You're gonna need to have, obviously, a Star Citizen account and download the PTU. And then from there, uh, that's basically where we will be at a starting position. First, we're going to get the VR up and running. Then we are going to unbind all the stuff that we need to get the joystick and VR running. And then we are going to get the wheel up and running. So, so I have mine set to Steam VR, auto hand controller, use built-in audio, checked. And then I have basically um, uh, run Vorpex control as administrator. That's pretty much the only kind of extra checkbox that I mark. And then once you see that it's running in the taskbar and turned on, then basically just launch the game Star Citizen. <clears throat> now the PTU has been having weird issues with it hooking into Vorpex itself, so just keep relaunching. Just keep trying. Eventually the PTU will hook. Now we gotta remember that if we deleted the user folder or this is your first time to run through, there are cameras on your VR headset and it's gonna want to ask you if to enable FOIP. So when the Star Citizen load window comes up in your VR headset, go back out, go to desktops. And then this window is going to pop up. And there's going to be one for FOIP. Unless they got rid of that window. There he is. Camera detected. Enable FOIP features? No. And now that will continue to load. Yeah, okay, I think that one's good. Okay, so we basically... <clears throat> Alright, first things first, if you want to run virtual reality in a window, uh, or if you want to be able to alt-tab while you're playing VR, you're going to need to set it at borderless. Uh, from there, I jack the field of view all the way up I turn off the camera blur we go to audio and kill the music okay um, so yeah I set I have a 4k monitor and I set it to 1440 and I run it in a window this seems to give me the best quickest results and it allows me to alt tab for recording and streaming purposes and stuff like that but technically you shouldn't need and to do any of this but I just find that it's nice for me turn off vertical sync sure why not Get rid of the, turn up the sharpening, turn down the aberration, get rid of the film grain. And that should be it for quick game settings that you should just enable and turn on. Now we're going to quit so that I could relaunch the game and then I can alt tab and it not crash on me. And again, the PTU is kind of finicky with it hooking and launching. But just keep trying. One of the big thing to one of the big things to remember is that if you're running, what do you call it, the Valve software, okay. So see right here, it didn't hook. One thing to try to do 
if you are running Valve Index software, is try to make sure that the home, the little room that you are sitting in to access all your VR apps, make sure that you are there and it's loaded up properly, and then try to launch the game. Because sometimes when... Sometimes when Star Citizen crashes in VR, it breaks the <clears throat> home panel and you have to restart everything in order for it to actually hook back in again. Alright, so we launch now that the home is turned on. And it went, looks like, first time. It says game is running. All right, relaunch. Yeah, you got to trick it with 3.13 in the PTU. Hopefully the regular version comes out and it's able to just launch. Okay, attaching to Star Citizen. And see, look, it didn't attach properly. There it goes. Next up, Star Citizen. Alright, it's loading this time. So, after you've made your video adjustments, and you're able to Alt-Tab, and your window is sized properly, which, by the way, we will have an advanced um, uh, resolution tutorial that I'm going to try to make here next week, where we will... <clears throat> correctly go into the we will <clears throat> where we will go into the star citizen files and basically load up and save a custom resolution to our uh, headsets actual sizes and dimensions and then that should give us a lot better view inside the game but for now I try to make sure everything is as stock as possible so that everybody can play and just be on the same page when they're setting it up so now that we are here and everything is working we double check more settings, so graphics, we have set to 1440, borderless, very high quality, uh, field of view all the way up, motion blur off. So, audio, we turned off the music. Game settings, turn off. To set up head tracking, we're going to go to comms, FOIP, and head tracking here at the right. I'm going to scroll down from the top to this drop down menu that says head tracking, general, source. Go to track IR, and then that will pop open open track that we downloaded earlier. And that's going to take your XYZ inputs from your headset, and it's going to use them in game. So, real quickly, we are going to scroll down a little further here, and then make sure some of these inputs are checked and unchecked. So, head, we're going to start from the bottom and go to the top. Head tracking, general. Use device offset, no. Head tracking, general external toggle view enabled. That just lets you basically look around in third person. Enable roll in FPS, yes. Enable roll in seats, yes. That is checked. Uh, head tracking, general toggle disable during interaction mode, no. Disable during interaction mode, no. Okay. Disable during Moby Glass, no. Disable during aim down sights. No. General toggle disabled during FPS. No. Toggle disable while during FPS. Toggle disable while seated. Auto recalibrate. And then let's see here. Use position to offset in cockpits. And then head tracking toggled enabled. Then you hit switch that to yes. And then boom, that should be set up for head tracking. Easy peasy. Okay, <clears throat> so now, really quickly, we're going to make sure open track is working properly and set up for whatever headset that you have. Now, I'm obviously running the Valve Index and I have it set to input Valve Steam VR, output Free Track 2.0 enhanced. And then that should be basically all you need to do. And to make sure that it's working, you hit start. And then you turn your head around and then the little octopus should do a little dance with your head movements. So. 
exit out of that. That will launch automatically when you uh, launch Vorp X. Okay, so Open Track is working properly. VR is now working with mouse and keyboard with Vorp X in your headset. So you're good to go if that's where you need to stop. Now we're going to set up the HOTAS. So really quickly, make sure that the HOTAS is the only thing that's plugged in. All right, so make sure that you only have your joystick plugged in first. We'll do the wheel after. Oh shit, drop my mouse. Okay. So everything should be working now. And to start setting up the joystick, we'll just immediately go over to Arena Commander, single player, and we'll just do free flight on Broken Moon. Okay, so, things to note, if you're sitting in your chair, looking straight forward, and the center of view is off, you go to Alt Space, and you just, boom, hit that. Alt space is the international default for um, uh, recentering your head tracking in VR. So, as you can see, mouse and keyboard works fine, but we need to turn off a whole bunch of these settings in order to get head tracking fully optimized with our joystick. Now, right out of the ba right out of the gate, the joystick will semi work because it's tracking joy axes. Uh, and inputs, but it's not properly set up for the entire button scheme of your what have you. Now, I have the X52 Pro, so if you have that, follow along. If not, do what you do normally for your setup. So I go to Control Profiles, we go to SciTech X52 Pro, Joystick, Joystick, load so there's only one drop down and there wasn't a joystick one there wasn't a joystick zero and a joystick one so that's good so all of the x52 pro hotos stuff has been loaded and now we need to go to the menus and disable some settings so first thing we do game settings scroll all the way down here okay here we go so, Hello there. Uh, some of the settings that you're going to want to turn off and mess with is go to game settings and then we're going to scroll down to the bottom third. And what you're looking at is targeting. Enable zoom on locked on target. No. And then targeting max zoom auto level. Max auto zoom level. We just disable that and drop that all the way down. So that alone is going to be amazing. And then next, what we need to do is go to key bindings and then joystick hotas and then down at advanced customization now we go to flight view and we go look left right all of this we need to basically disable because now we could do that with our head okay so that's all done and then dynamic zoom in and out abs x-axis rotation get rid of that stuff all right so we go back out and then boom it has stopped zooming in when you're in the cockpit so now that that is the biggest issue that a lot of people complain about when they're playing in vr you have successfully disabled that and now you have also enabled full vr controls with your joystick. Now, unfortunately, they have some weird things that you also got to do with defaults in the menus, such as, let's see here, flight, HOTAS thrust invert toggle. You notice that the throttle is kind of backwards, as it should be. If you go forward, it goes backwards. If you pull backwards, it goes forwards. So to fix that, we go to Menu, Settings, Controls here, and then we go down at the bottom to Joystick, HOTAS 1, Inversion Settings, and then we want to go to In Flight, Flight Movement, and then 
flight strafe forwards. Yes. Let me go back, return to game. And now the throttle is perfectly set. We go forward with it, backwards with it, and it does what we want it to. Okay, so next, now that you have your joystick working properly, your head tracking looking properly, your throttle looking properly, all of your buttons and stuff should do what they do naturally. That are set up for the X52 Pro as default. So all of that's good to go. The last thing you want to do to just make your life easier when you're in a cockpit in VR with all this other stuff is turn off the mouse controls. Whenever you want to mouse around and do something or if you bump something and the mouse moves, it's just going to drag you around. So now that you have full VR cockpit control, just disable the mouse. Remember this whenever you try to mess with the game on your main computer outside of your cockpit that you can't actually do it without the HOTAS. So, we go to key bindings, mouse keyboard, advanced customization, and then flight, movement, X and Y axis, just get rid of them. That's all we need to do. Back, return to game. Okay. As we can see, it's working. All of our buttons and stuff. Okay, so now, <clears throat> now that we've done all of that, if you like the default controls for the X52 Pro, then you can proceed on to setting up the wheel with the G27 tutorial here next. But before we do that, if you want to get rid of and move around some bindings, this is what I like to do. Currently, the eventual setup I want is my thumb button on the bottom. Thumb button on the bottom of my left hand, I want to be boost. The button above that, in the middle, I want it to be break, and then the button on the top, I want that to be decoupled. And then there should be two little uh, turning radi radial rings, one on the top here and then one on the bottom button. The top one has always been speed limiter, but the bottom one I want to set to acceleration limiter. And then that will make your left hand so much more incredibly easier to use. So we go to joystick, HOTAS, controls. And now let's see here. What are we looking for? Movement. Okay, so what we want to get rid of is swap, roll, toggle, nope. Strafe, forward, backward, invert. Get rid of that. Get rid of decoupled mode. Get rid of afterburner. And then we need to get rid of brake. Land toggle VTOL landing system. Okay, so uh, afterburner, we're going to set to the bottom button here. Space brake. I'm going to set to the middle button there, button 7. And then decouple, we're going to set to the top button there. Ground vehicle movement brake. That's fine. Okay, and then, so see how speed limiter, absolute, and then speed limiter, relative. Okay, speed limiter, absolute is already set to Y axis rotation. That is this little turning knob right here. So what we're going to do is go to the absolute value on the acceleration limiter, double click, and then we're going to move that other x-axis rotation. Boom. So z-axis and y-axis are now set for um, acceleration and speed limiters, and that's going to help you out a lot later. Okay, so I think from here, we pretty much have all the HOTAS stuff set up, little extra things that I like to do.
And then, of course, everybody can set up their own targeting and um, uh, firing however they like to because, you know, weapons and targeting and pips and all sorts of stuff is, you know, very personal per person as far as what they want on their right hand. So I'll let you guys do all of that. But I like to usually do nearest enemy on down on the thumb hat, nearest ally on the left because I've got my homies on the left, and then nearest or, you know, cycle through all targets on the right and then target whatever's in front of me on the above. And I do that for quick targeting on the POV hat or the little D-pad hat, actually, not the POV hat. And then that also frees up your eight part POV hat depending on which joystick you have. Okay, congratulations, that is full head tracking, joystick, and VR HOTAS setup for the X52 Pro Valve Index and Vorpex. Uh, we are done if you're just looking to fly and get into the PU after that. The last step, however, is to plug back in the wheel and then get that working from the ground up. So let's go ahead and quit the game. All right, so if you needed to reset your headset and get your home back up, all that jazz. And now we are going to set up the wheel. I have a Logitech G27. So if you have that, follow along. And if you have a different wheel and there's something different, then just contact me in the comments or, you know, I'm on Reddit. But just... Uh, you can find me live on Twitch sometimes, but yeah, just get a hold of me through the comment section or whatever of the video. If you're having an issue, I get plenty of people help that way. All right, so now that... God dang it, my glasses just keep falling out. Now that you got your wheel plugged in, for my G27, there's a setting in Windows that we have to do. So we click on Windows and we go to USB, and it's set up USB game controllers is what we're looking for. From here, we go to the wheel, G27, we go to properties, and then make sure everything is all working and stuff like that. Yes, that's good. Clutch, okay, so, combined access, single access used for most games. We need to click that and then hit close, and then okay. So, quick breakdown on what that does. Most games, if you have a racing wheel, such as the G27, use three axes for control one axis, two for your gas and then three for the brake the clutch is basically an on off kind of slider if you will that doesn't really need so much of an axis uh, that is how most racing games and sim races and stuff are set up but old arcade games such as like cruising usa and pretty much anything that drove you know with an arcade wheel they only had the two axes for inputs because that's just how those old motherboards and the engine for those games, you know, ran. So they would do x-axis for steering, obviously, and then they would split your gas and your brake pedal 50% on one axis. So if this is the 0 to 100 on your y-axis, then at the 50 mark is your brake, and if you hit the brake, then you go from 49 down to 0, right? And if you hit the gas, then you go from 50, uh, whatever, up to 100, okay? So this allows you to put two pedals onto one axis as you kind of manipulate them. If you do not turn on that setting, it's going to think that your pedal is permanently undepressed because it's going to assume that your main axis that you hit for your um, uh, pedals in the vehicle is basically at the 0%. And that means that it's full reverse. So that is how you fix that issue. And that will let you enable ground vehicles as well as using your pedals in space to fly forward and backwards. All right. So now that we've done that, we launch Star Citizen. And just hopefully it'll just work here. Basically, the hardest part was just knowing to go to Windows and then disable or enable that checkbox depending on what your setting is. But now that you've gotten that done, you just go to Key Bindings. Joystick Hotos, Advanced Customization, and then Flight Movement.
And then what we're looking for is throttle forwards and backwards. And we put that on slider one, then it shows up as input two, nice. Okay, and now we just do some other house cleaning buttons once we get into Arena Commander. I like to put some buttons on the wheel, such as bring up the quantum menu on my right paddle shifter. Actually, quantum jump on my left paddle shifter. I do like, um, uh, let's see here. I think like free look and some sort of other toggle on the left for weapons lock, and then on this lower button I do VTOL mode. So yeah, just a couple of little tiny things that you can do to make your life easier while setting up uh, the wheel. So go ahead and head into Arena Commander. Okay, so you might have noticed, hey, wait a minute, that's not good. You're like, hey, wait a minute, what's going on? My wheel is now taking over the spot of my joystick. All of my controls are all messed up. Well. That happens for whatever reason. Because something broke within the Star Citizen menus. And um, uh, we can't have nice things. But there is a fix. Basically what has happened is that your wheel is permanently going to go on slot one for joysticks, right? And whereas you plugged in your joystick and it was in slot one and you had all your controls set up onto slot one. Well, now you need it to move over to slot two. Because when you plug in the wheel, it's supposed to be taking up slot two, but now it's permanently stuck on slot one for whatever reason. So to fix this, I have the console commands below. You could just copy and paste them from my chat, but I'm actually going to go to my YouTube page. I think actually I might have them on my discord here that I can just get to, but this is also why you want to run in a windowed mode to be able to alt tab and access different windows. All right, so what we are looking to do is PP resort devices joystick one, two. And what this console command is going to do is basically swap whatever's on joystick one and whatever's on joystick two. Now, notice how controls, gear, key bindings, joystick HOTAS, advanced customization, flight, movement. Notice how when we did bind something to it, the Z axis, the pedals for forward backwards, it showed up as input two. So it is clearly labeled input two, but it unfortunately has slotted in and is permanently set on input one. So in order to do this, we just go to the console command menu. We paste our console command pp underscore resort devices space joystick space one space two that will swap one and two move actions from joystick zero to joystick one move one action from joystick one to joystick zero okay now that that's done we hit escape And then we have all of our joystick controls back. If we hit 
Well, hang on here. Let's try to. Options, key bindings, joystick hotas. So now we shall be able to bind successfully all of our extra stuff. All right, so throttle, let's get rid of that. Slider one. Boom. And when we hit, oh yeah, okay. And remember that this is backwards. So key bindings, joystick hotas, advanced customization. So remember when you want to bind the pedal for f move forward or backwards that it's actually reverse of what you think. So for throttle forward, backwards, hit. Oh, actually, I think it's the same pedal. That's right. If I hit the brake, it's slider one. All right, so yeah, all you need to do to do that, options. Key bindings, wait, what is it, controls? Yes, inversion settings, okay. So in order to fix that, you just gotta adjust the inversion settings on your HOTAS joystick one. Flight, flight movement. Yes. Flight straight forwards backwards. Alright, so now gas pedal is forward, brake pedal is backwards. Alright. And then the wheel doesn't do anything, but if you want it to, you can bind it. But what I like to do, obviously, right at this point, is remember to go to ground vehicle movement. Drive forwards, backwards, get rid of all this joystick stuff, and then drive forwards, backwards, on the slider. And then turn left, right, axis. Boom. X axis. And now, with those two inputs, you can drive a car in VR, in Star Citizen. Uh, brake and gas on the slider, and then uh, your steering wheel on the wheel. And that's how you basically do that. That should be all the quick bindings and whatnot that are just make your that just get your vehicles up and going. Everything as much default as possible with settings, and this gets you full cockpit, full head tracking, VR, HOTAS, and wheel and pedals. So uh, with that, you can take this and uh, go over how much further you want with other custom buttons and other little things like that. Uh, Till next time, as always, stay safe and fly right.